Sit down, sit down. Why am I supposed to join? I'll point to you. Does it make me go in? Why is there a video camera? We're recording it now. <laughs> People want to see us. Not really, but I've been recording everything. Can you scoot over? Yes. Thanks. You're not in the shot. Oh, I'm not in the shot? Oh, there I am. <laughs> So I'm here with my intermission guest and my recently arrived co-host. We'll start uh, introducing intermission guest first, I guess. Uh, Michael Wolf. Wolf with an E, right? Yeah, Wolf with an E. Wow. And my co-host, um, Amy Hoffman. Hello. So thanks, guys, for coming on. Um, Michael, as I understand it, you are a active musician. Oh, active is um, a generous term. Oh. Um, used to be active. Okay. Uh, Part-time, you know, finding things here and there. Is, is what I do. I, I, I try and play as much local stuff, be a part of the local Baltimorean music scene as much as I can. It, it's, it's tough, you know how it is in college. Yeah, you very, busy. very busy. And plus, you know, the seasons can go up and down. There can be a lot of gigs at one point and nothing. You can have a dry season for like three or four months. Gotcha. So what instruments do you play? Uh, I guess I started on guitar and stuck through that. I play some other rhythm instruments, uh, piano, drums. I used to fiddle around with some folk instruments like the banjo. Oh. I was in a was in a folk band for a year or so. Wow. Oh, I also play the gongs. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. The you gongs. Mean, yeah. Well, in uh, I'm I'm part of the UMBC Gamelan Ensemble. Yeah, it's two I credits. I didn't know we had that. There's one. It's a, it's an ancient in, uh, Indonesian uh, uh, orchestra. Gamelan? Uh, ga Gamelan. 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 Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I actually just got back from it. Ancient, <laughs> ancient Indonesian orchestra. Very, very, very different sound. And very different from... If you like Western music, don't listen to a Gamelan. Okay. Um, but if you want to, if you want to, like, get out of your comfort zone, um, it's very... This the whole musical structure is different. That's really cool. It's all percussive and, and, uh, and things aren't... How did you stumble upon that? Oh, I took a Music of the Worlds course. Uh -huh. So it was a class that we um, just explored the musical traditions from all over the globe and the same professor who did that was doing this and I um, got into jazz band this semester but then it was during another class I had so I was like I need an ensemble this semester bada bing bada boom gotcha. I, uh, no pun intended <laughs> because it's <laughs> that's probably what you ensemble. do <laughs> uh -huh. um, that's really I, cool I ended up in Gamelan which I might get a be in <laughs> oh why <laughs> I have missed lots of Gamelan practices <laughs> <laughs> and that's that is the only thing that's created. Gotcha. Um, so you said an ensemble. Are you also a music major? I used to be. I used to be. Um, I was an ambitious freshman. Uh huh. Uh, thought I could do the physics, music, double major, and then I was like, "That's a lot of money." Don't many have people. That. Many people think that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't really realize that it's like takes two hundred credits in like six years, and you're like, "Oh wow." Like you, yeah. oh. So now I'm physics, math, double, and I have to still do my minor in music. Nice. That's pretty cool. So it sounds like you're almost done in your minor music then. Yeah, I'm done after this semester. That's pretty cool. So with your um, physics, math, and music, what do you hope to do? Do you hope to be a physics uh, teacher yeah. who teaches Te teaching, music on the teaching side? Teaching and doing research. Um, That's really cool. Possibly in academia. Nice. Yeah. Amy, let me know if you have any questions. Just chime in. She's, she's Tell me about your life, Amy. Yeah. No, I'm not the intermission guest. That's true. She's been an intermission guest. She's done her time. Uh, okay. <laughs> So, um, uh, today, if you might have heard, is Election Music Day. I um, voted last week. You voted last week? Awesome. That's pretty cool. Amy, have you voted yet? I have voted. Nice. Voted last week. I'm voting Tuesday. I hope the lines aren't too long. I realize that all the cool people... Are you going No, I'm going to Catonsville High School because I've redistricted myself when I registered. Good for you. Yeah, not on purpose. It just <laughs> happened. I tried to apply for an absentee, absentee ballot and I ended up applying for a new voter registration card with my address actually from last year so on my card it thinks I still live in gunpowder anyways Interesting. it's fine um, I got four years to get another one so but or two if you're gonna do state right? true true don't forget about state elections those are the important ones those. those are the important okay, ones no, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I, the reason we had Larry Hogan is I did not vote in the state elections let's that be on the record I'm so sad. Parker didn't vote either. It's I, okay. I don't think I did it. Yeah, I forgot. I, forgot. <laughs> I was too busy that day. Um, but you know, we're talking a lot about um, music in the election cycle. And um, do you guys, how do you think uh, music 
influences uh, the election is kind of a vague question. But especially this year with the proliferation of a bunch of social media, there's been a lot of music, uh, political music, in the pop culture. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. As I tear the sticker off, mm -hmm. very interesting. I think, um, uh, you know, I, I look on my Facebook wall, and you know, you always see sort of um, hot and cold, like really pro Hillary, really pro Trump right. posts. Um, and then there's the majority of people who who avoid all at all costs. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, when you follow like celebrities and whatnot, you see a lot of what the celebrities um, uh, and, and who they endorse. And I was just talking to you this early, like, I, some of the celebrities I really look, look up to, like, Sarah Bareilles is, like, totally gung-ho about Hillary. Yeah. And, like, I was just talking, like, Chance the Rapper is, like, endorsed Hillary. And, like, Lady Gaga and Katy Perry. All these people, like, Hillary, Hillary, Hillary. And I'm sitting there, like, why aren't any celebrities endorsing Trump? Like, if the 538 has 44% of the popular vote going to Trump and 48% uh -huh. like of it going to Hillary. Right. As of I think a couple of days ago. So where are they all? So where where I know if 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 the if um you know if if we're assuming the the claim to fame is an even spread over the population of the United States, why are we not seeing half of you know half of these musicians endorse Trump? Maybe not looking around at places. Do you guys know any any celeb any mm -hmm. sorry, any any I mean I know that there are some celebrities, but any musicians. I, I don't I'm I don't curious. Believe, so. you know, there's a lot of like old country artists that yeah. perform for Trump. Oh yeah, they look like Willie Nelson or something. Yeah. Um, no probably. Well they made jokes about that at the RNC and the DNC. Um if you went to the yeah, Republican Demi National Lovato Convention. Was at DNC, right? Yeah. If you went to the Republican yeah. National Convention there were like two C list celebrities that were like, I'm a celebrity because yeah. they had to remind people because no one knew who they were. And you went to the Democratic Convention and then it was just like Everyone yeah, was names. there, yeah. And like it was weird because the RNC is like all these like, like wine moguls and like billionaires who just made it in business, and they're famous because they just made it, right? Um, but not in pop culture. I mean, for obviously for obvious reasons, why you know the parties are obviously supporting different social classes here, right, so it's right. not a surprise we see um, that correlation. It's just pretty interesting. But it is. I think it is interesting in the fact that you know, like you were playing some historical songs um, from the '60s. Uh, where where this artists in the '60s were, you know, is tired of the system. They, yeah, doing they, the same they thing. were complaining about the government. They, you know, there was a big there was a Vietnam War in the '60s. There was a civil rights civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. People were really angry, and um, and you know, people expressed their anger in the most human way possible, and that's to 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 you know, pour it out in emotions with yeah. with music and with poetry and with art, and um, and I don't think it's I mean maybe I haven't done enough research into it, but I don't think it's a, it's a surprise that we find um, the people, tr you know, I don't think, I don't, I don't think we find it a surprise that, that, that artists generally lean towards progressive movements. Yeah, because they're the ones pushing the boundaries right. with their art, so why not exactly, you know, social issues? I, it's coming, you know, I'm a musician and I've gone through phases of my life where it's really easy to write music and it's really hard to write music. Uh huh. And you know when it's really hard to write music? When everything's going fine. When everything's oh. just going fine, uh -huh. you, like, can't, you can't get the creative juices out. Right, because you you're know? just happy. You want you're to you're fine. You're content with life, you know? You don't have to write about it. Uh, and then, like, and then like once you go through a breakup, or like things are ha struggling with like financially, or your family, or like friends are, are backstabbing you, that's when you get pissed off. Uh -huh. That's when you get sad. That's when you sit in your room moping, and you get out the pencil and paper, and you start writing really sappy lyrics that you put to some <laughs> stupid guitar if you probably stole off some other song you listened uh -huh. to. But that's, good. That's, that's, the creative, that's the creative juices, you know? And I think we see a correlation between the, the, the really powerful music out there and the people who are, are sort of oppressed by society. You yeah. Know? Um, I think one of, my, one of my biggest, the biggest musician I look up to probably still today and throughout my childhood was Jimi Hendrix. Oh, really? So he was one of the big reasons I started to take guitar seriously. Oh. And okay. he was, you know, a black man in the, in the, time, in the 60s. Uh-huh. And he was, a cr he was a pretty crazy guy. Um, I think one of the coolest things I think he did was he, during Woodstock, I think 68 or 69, uh -huh. um, he, he did, he... You know, this guy, imagine being there in Woodstock, you know, you're, you're, it's a hot summer day and there's this dude with a guitar, you know, in, in rug, you know, like, 
jeans that are falling apart, beaded sweater, you know, like scarf, bandana, like probably who knows how many drugs he's doing. And uh -huh. he starts playing the, the national anthem on oh. the guitar. And, and this is an iconic guitar solo of the Star Spangled Banner. He starts playing on his guitar. Now, people get annoyed when, like, you don't stand up for the national anthem at a football game. Imagine you have some guy tripping on acid. <laughs> So much distortion on his guitar, you can't even tell the difference between the notes he's playing. Uh -huh. And he starts playing the national anthem, and he's playing it with just like, he's not playing it in a respectful way. You know? Right. He's like finger tapping. He's like, you know what a cherry bomb is? Cherry bombs when you like take the whammy bar on your guitar and you just like, you just and you just like the make the yeah, you just like bend the the whole the the strings just like lose half their tension and you just uh -huh. like bring a note down like. Like several, crazy. several. And you can break down a, a, an octave over an octave. Oh, just wow. doing like these cherry bombs, just doing like tapping in the middle of the national anthem. Uh huh. And like people were just like, and it was so controversial and so revolutionary. Really? I never and heard about that. And I think it was. I highly suggest to to listen Let's to check it. Check that out. Just because I think it was one of those really cool political protests that didn't even need words. Right. You just you know? it was all it music. It was just a statement, and it was kind of. A, I think it was kind of a middle finger to the to to how. To, to, the, to the system at that point because uh -huh. I'm pretty angry at the government, yeah. especially that that group. And, and I just think I just think it's the I think there's no surprise that we find more oppressed people right 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 music more that's powerful how they're, music they're escape because music is about connecting emotionally and mm -hmm. when everything's going all right it's not it's not a lot to connect. And yeah, I mean we find it anyway, in lots of places. I don't know. What do you uh -huh. think, Amy? Yeah, what do you think? Of you can't. You get a big leader. You're just kind of waiting to say something. Kind of sitting there. I, uh, um, no, good historical good. analysis. Yeah. I just kept thinking about the Trump girls that were singing that song. Oh yeah, those poor, that, yeah. That those poor was folks. I, I I um gave Parker the pleasure of. Um, discovering Tiffany's single. Yeah, we're gonna oh, have to listen to it later. So excellent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Tiffany and Trump has a musical single. Well, with that, we're about out of time. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Um, Thanks for having me. Thanks for arriving, Amy. <laughs> Good job. Um, and I will talk to you later, Michael. Thanks.